Hi everybody, I'm Rick Beato. In today's Everything Music, we're going to talk about how to write for strings. We're going to talk about the ranges of the instruments and some idiomatic elements of each of the instruments in the string family and also how to voice chords within the strings. That's coming up next. Okay, first of all, let's go over the ranges of each instrument. All right, let's talk about the range of the double bass. The lowest note, just like the bass guitar, is a low E. Then the bass being tuned in fourth says the next notes A, D, and G. Now some basses with an extension on them will go down to C. That C you will find in certain orchestral pieces. You'll see the extender on the bass if you've ever noticed one. They stick way up above the headstock on a bass, on a double bass. And those will go back to C and they will actually have different levers that you can push to go back chromatically. You'll see them in certain orchestras depending on what types of pieces they're playing. You'll see those in film scoring because you'll have a lot of really low, extra low bass notes in certain film scores. But typically, the lowest note of the bass is this low E. Now, this low E is actually written as this note but it sounds here. So this is the line below the bass clef, the first line below the bass clef. It's that E, but it sounds here. It sounds an octave lower than written. Next is the cello. The lowest note of the cello is this low C here. Now the cello is tuned in fifths. So the next note is G, D, and then A, C, G, D, now, one of the things about the cello is that you can play chords on it, just like on the violin and the viola. An example of it would be the spread triad. It's the open C string, open G string, and then the E, a step above the open D string. So chords you can play on the cello. If I were to play these notes, C sharp, G sharp, this would be in half position which is the first position on the two lowest strings. So this is the two open lowest strings. This is half position. You can do things like play sixth intervals as well. So you can really create some really great intervals down in the low register on the cello. Continuing on, we have the viola. Viola's lowest note is the C below middle C. Now the viola is written in alto clef, which means that the note middle C is right in the middle of the staff, where a B would be in treble clef or a D would be in bass clef. So here's the lowest note. This is one octave above the cello, which is down here. So we have C, G, D, A. Now you can also play chords in the viola like you can with the cello. And lastly, we have the violin. The violin begins on this G right below middle C. So here's middle C. This is the lowest note of the violin, the low G. Then D, A, and E is the top string. So it's tuned in fifths, G, D, A, E. So this is a perfect fifth above the viola. So the viola starts here, then the lowest note of the violin is here. Lowest note of the viola, lowest note of the violin. Then if you scan over here, lowest note of the cello, and then lowest note of the bass. So bass, cello, viola, violin, violin. Those are the ranges of the instruments. Okay, let's talk about orchestrating a few chords here. We're gonna take some really large chords so we can uh, talk about divisis that can happen in the uh, string orchestra. Okay, so the first chord we're gonna do is this big 
fat. That would be like an E Aeolian voicing, okay? So I have an E octave in the bass. This lowest E happens to be the low E string of the, of the bass. But then I, I'm gonna actually divide the bass section up to play octaves. So half the basses will play the low E, half will play the E and octave up on the D string. Then in the cellos, I'm gonna have the cellos play, uh, divide up and play C, G, okay? Now, this can be done either by splitting the section or having the entire section play a double stop, okay? The double stop of a fifth is very easy to play since all you need to do is bar your finger across the string. So that can be done. You really need to know where these, you really need to know how these instruments are set up so that you know how to write for them. So that's the first part. So those are my cellos and basses. I get the basses doing the octave E's. I have the cellos. Let's say we're going to do it where they're playing just a double stop. The entire section is playing double stop C, G. It'd probably be better in tune if they split, if they did a divisi and you gave half the section C, half the section G. Either way, uh, you probably get um, you probably get good intonation either way. And then we're going to take the violas and we're going to split them up in octave F sharps. Okay, so we've got bass, cellos, then violas, and then here's my violins. So the second violins are going to divide and play G, D, and the first violins are going to play the high melody note A. Okay? So we'll have the power on that, uh, imagining that that's going to be leading somewhere. Once again, bass, bass, cello, cello, viola, viola, violin, two, violin, two, and then first violin. I'll play the whole chord. So that is a one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine note chord voicing to be spread out over the orchestra. Now we can do some really easy voicings. For example, you could do a simple F sharp minor chord. I basically did a spread triad with an octave above, okay? so. You can put the basses and the cellos on unison, F sharp. Or you can have the basses take the F sharp, cellos can take C sharp, and then viola and the violins can all play on the A. Or you could have you have the basses, bass, cello, cello, viola, first and second violin. There's a few different ways that you can divide these chords up, and what you need to think about is what the range of the instrument is. If you want intensity, you voice a lower instrument higher in register so that it speaks with more intensity. So I might take a tension note that if I have a chord like this, that, and, and voice that G sharp against it in the cellos, uh, because that's in a higher register, as opposed to being a really low note in the viola, since the viola lowest note is here, then you're on its second string, which is a G string, and it's one note above that. It's a relatively low note in the viola, but that G sharp is a much higher note in the cello. If you think of the cello, is a more intense sound. So you have to take into consideration the range of the instrument 
and if you have a, a note that you want to sound exciting, you voice a lower instrument higher to give it the, the power. Because as the string gets shorter and you're playing in higher and higher registers, the notes become more intense because there's less string length. Okay, let's say we voice another really complex chord. So let's say that it's something like this. Okay, so what do I have here? I've got F, C, A, E, C sharp. Okay, so I've got a polychord. I've got A major over F major, but the it's sharing the note A. Okay, so now this is a fifth, which I can easily either play the cellos, playing these, dividing these up, or playing it as a double stop. I can play the bass on F, the cellos on C, okay? Might not have the quite the weight that you want it to have. If I put the basses on F, and then the cellos divisi F and C, and then, then I put the violas on A, second violins, first violins. Okay, so there's a lot of different ways that these chords can be divided up, and you have to really know what size orchestra you have, how the chord is going to speak within the different registers. Many times the bass will simply double the cello on the same note, which means it's sounding an octave lower, but there may be special effects that you want to have. If I want that spread triad at the bottom of the chord to have a lot of weight, I'm going to try and balance it as evenly as possible. Okay, I don't want to necessarily give too much weight to the root. Okay, I might want to really uh, divide those up. I could even play, honestly, I could play the basses playing that fifth like that. Okay, F and C is very easy to play in the bass, and I could actually have the cellos play it. Now, the viola, this note A, is on the second string, on the G string. Okay, so it's not going to have as much intensity, it's not going to speak as loudly as this double stop is. So, you want to really think about this when you're orchestrating these chords. That's all for now. I'm gonna have more of my orchestrating for strings in part two. I'm Rick Beato.